Every year, losing weight ranks among the top New Year's resolutions. And every year we keep trying some of the same methods. And not surprisingly, we keep getting the same disappointing results. If you're eating healthfully and working out but not losing weight, there may be a reason. The unfortunate truth is that your body fights back when you try to lose weight. And most weight loss strategies don't work long term. Some can even make matters worse or cause other harms. But that doesn't mean trying to shed pounds is futile. Studies show that some approaches are, in fact, effective, so changing your strategy could help. In this video, we'll talk about five popular methods of losing weight that often fail, and alternatives that are more likely to lead to long-term success. Tracking calories is the practice of recording the number of calories you've consumed through food and beverages each day. This can be done manually using food labels and nutrition databases, or through apps and websites designed for this purpose. Tracking calories may be effective in the short term, but it typically results in frustration and failure in the long run. One reason is that calorie counting is difficult to do precisely. While food packages and some restaurant menus list calories, they're not always accurate. And many foods, such as those in home-cooked meals, don't come with listed calories. Even with the help of apps, deconstructing these foods to tally calories is hard and time-consuming. It can also lead to calorie obsession. It might involve constant tracking of calories, extreme dieting, and prioritizing calorie counts over nutritional quality. This can turn meals into a stressful exercise of counting and weighing, and can contribute to an unhealthy relationship with food that makes it even harder to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. Another problem is that fixating on calories can take the focus off other factors that matter, such as the nutritional makeup of foods and how filling they are. A serving of jelly beans, for example, has fewer calories than a serving of nuts, but the nuts are more weight-friendly, if consumed in moderation, because they don't cause a spike in blood sugar that leaves you feeling hungry. Instead of calorie counting, keep a general eye on calories and portions, but also pay attention to the overall nutritional quality of foods, which includes the amount of added sugar, the less, the better, fiber, the more, the better, and protein, which can help fill you up. Consider how healthful and filling the foods are, and how you feel after eating them. Keeping a food journal is a good way to do this. Research shows that logging what and how much you eat and drink each day can improve long-term weight control by making you more aware of your dietary patterns, and you can easily identify where you need to make changes. Number 2. Exercising The types of exercise that most of us do burn relatively few calories. Studies find that moderately intense aerobic exercise such as walking for 30 minutes a day, 5 days a week, the amount recommended for good health, typically produces little or no weight loss. Shedding pounds requires more vigorous and sustained workouts than most people are willing or able to do. Effective weight loss typically demands vigorous and prolonged physical activity. This means engaging in high-intensity workouts consistently, and most people are willing or able to do it. Here's the bummer. Even if we manage to ramp up our routines that much, our bodies may compensate by increasing our appetite and slowing metabolism, and that limits how many pounds we lose. Let me explain. See as we increase our physical activity, our bodies may respond by ramping up hunger signals. This can lead to increased food intake, potentially negating the calorie deficit created by exercise, therefore you retain or lose less weight. The body may also adjust by becoming more efficient with energy use and reducing the basal metabolic rate, BMR. This means that even at rest, the body burns fewer calories, which can slow down weight loss progress. Together, these factors create a situation where, even with more intense workouts, the anticipated weight loss might not be as significant due to the body's natural regulatory responses. Viewing exercise as a weight loss method creates unrealistic expectations that make us more likely to give up on physical activity. And it turns exercise into a type of punishment, a price we must pay to slim down and something we're therefore inclined to avoid. Instead of that, think of moving your body as a way to enhance the quality of your life. Focus on the immediate benefits such as better sleep, less stress, or a feeling of empowerment. One result may be that you find it easier to make healthy, weight-friendly food choices and to resist emotional eating. And you'll be more likely to stick with exercise for the long haul. The payoff of this perseverance is huge. Regular exercise reduces the risk of a long list of diseases from colds to cancer, and while it may not melt away pounds immediately, it can prevent weight gain and improve your appearance by increasing muscle mass. Number 3. Eliminating carbs, fat, or other categories of foods.
Weight loss approaches that demonize entire categories of food may work temporarily, but they're rarely sustainable over time. A number of studies comparing restrictive diets such as low-carb and low-fat have found that there are no clear winners. After about a year, people on competing diets wind up losing roughly the same amount of weight. Whether the forbidden foods are cheese and chocolate or cereal and corn, restrictive diets often leave us feeling deprived. Banning foods that we enjoy can do a number on our brains, causing us to crave the foods even more. Sooner or later, most of us yield to temptation. For some dieters, this process can trigger binge eating. Instead, pay attention to the general quality of your diet. Emphasize whole foods like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, nuts, seafood, and lean poultry, and minimize highly processed foods, sometimes called ultra-processed foods, such as chips, cookies, refined grains, soda, hot dogs, and fries. Research suggests that this eating pattern is effective for not only managing weight long-term, but also optimizing our health. Such an approach provides lots of leeway, allowing for countless combinations of foods and varying proportions of fats, carbohydrates, and protein. The result is an increased likelihood of finding a weight-friendly way of eating that works for you without making you feel deprived. Number four, eating fat-burning foods. Regularly, we hear about foods, ranging from avocados and apple cider vinegar to grapefruit and green tea, that purportedly have special powers to melt away pounds. Like demonized foods, fat-burning foods appeal to our desire for simple solutions. Typically though, the research behind the claims for these superfoods is preliminary and funded by entities with a financial interest. While some of the foods may have small effects on appetite or metabolism, there's little evidence that any of this translates into actual weight loss. Instead, focus on incorporating general categories of foods into your diet, such as vegetables, fruits, beans, seeds, nuts, and fish, rather than specific items. Choose foods within these groups based on what you like, not what you think you must eat. Foods low in energy density, meaning they contain fewer calories per bite, may be especially helpful. Examples include salads, broth soups, beans, plain yogurt, and most fruits and veggies. Such foods, which are relatively high in water, tend to be low in calories but still take up space in your stomach, making you feel satisfied without eating a lot of high-calorie foods. A number of studies show that a low-energy density diet is effective for controlling weight. Number 5. Taking over-the-counter weight loss pills. These weight loss supplements often contain a mixture of ingredients such as caffeine, green tea extract, and raspberry ketone. Like other dietary supplements, they're only loosely regulated, and manufacturers aren't required to prove their products are safe or effective. Some products have been found to contain banned substances in them which can cause cancer. Overall, the limited evidence that exists shows that a few ingredients in supplements may lead to a few pounds of weight loss in the short run, but we don't know whether they help long term. Adding further to the uncertainty, levels of ingredients vary from product to product in the unregulated supplement market and aren't always disclosed. What's more, it's often unclear how combining a particular ingredient with multiple substances, as supplements typically do, influences effectiveness. The same goes for safety. Even if an ingredient has few or no side effects when used alone, it may interact with other ingredients to cause harm. But because there hasn't been rigorous, or in some cases any testing, there's no way to tell. In short, taking a supplement for weight loss is a leap in the dark and should not be done unless you've talked to your doctor about it. Instead, if you're a candidate, consider prescription weight loss medications, which research has shown to reduce body weight significantly, and keep it off if the drugs are continued. The newest of these, such as Ozempic, control appetite by mimicking hormones that signal to the brain we're full. However, the drugs come with potential side effects and can be expensive, and they're intended only for those who have obesity or who are overweight and have at least one condition such as diabetes. Another effective option for people in this category is weight loss or bariatric surgery. Like prescription medication, surgery results in substantially greater weight loss than what's typically achieved through diet and lifestyle changes. In addition, it can produce dramatic improvements in health, including reversing diabetes and lowering the odds of developing it. Surgery is also associated with reduced risks of cancer and premature death, and improves high blood pressure, abnormal cholesterol, sleep apnea, and other conditions. Though the safety of bariatric surgery has improved greatly in recent years, it nevertheless does have risks and possible side effects. It's therefore important to carefully assess how these stack up against your weight-related health risks and the potential benefits. 
Yet another option that's been proven effective is intensive behavioral therapy, or IBT, which focuses on changing behaviors that contribute to excess weight. Working with a health professional such as a therapist, nurse practitioner, or registered dietitian, people receive guidance and support for issues like devising eating and exercise plans, setting goals, self-monitoring, identifying challenges, and developing strategies to deal with them. Losing weight is no easy feat for most people. You may feel like you are doing all the right things by eating well or exercising regularly, but the scales are not showing you the results that you expect. By embracing the tips shared in this video, it is possible to overcome the hurdles and achieve lasting success in your quest for a healthier weight. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.